Thank you all for uh, for being here. I uh, want to start, just appreciate the crowd that was here. I thought we had a, and really everybody that was part of creating a great atmosphere on Saturday. Um, we just didn't deliver, didn't coach or play well enough to be a quality opponent. I'm not sure we could have beat a subpar opponent on Saturday. We just did not play very good football. Uh, very erratic in two out of three phases. Uh, for a veteran, veteran team, just disappointing how we performed. And um, it, it's... And, and I take ownership of it. You know, the product on the field is, is, is on me, and, and I wasn't very fired up about it. I'm sure our fans weren't very fired up about it. Um, to recap the game just quickly, I'll start with special teams. I thought that was the bright spot. Encouraged with how we played over there. Um, only, for, only for A's that we won the game. Uh, we won the hidden yards. Um, I'll, I'll do this in all three. It's kind of the same routine I've always done. For you guys that have been here, that – um, the negatives, the things we got to improve on, we, we ran a guy right into our punter, can't do that. Um, and he was probably going to run into the punter on his own, but we put his hands on him. Um, and then our kickoff return unit and our punt return, we got to give our guys some chances. Um, you know, I think uh, Preston in particular is really talented, uh, punt returner, and we didn't give him enough room. We got to do a better job holding guys on the, holding up guys on the line of scrimmage. The positives, we had several. I thought our cover teams were very good. All four times we punted were fair catches. Um, we punted the ball extremely well. Um, hang time, distance for, for Ali. Um, our kickoff team looked different. Uh, we played really fast and really physical. If you look at Zay Jennings and Jaden Bray, we looked quite a bit different uh, than the last couple games of last year against Baylor and North Carolina when we just were not very good on that team. Um, we got speed and, and we played fast there. Um, and then we defended the swinging gate when they went for two and out of their field goal formation there uh, after their first touchdown. We defended that, and um, I thought that was that was well coached up. So uh, pleased with our special teams. we got to continue to, to, to grow them, and, and hopefully we'll be talking about takeaways and touchdowns on special teams. But I was really, like I said, I was really encouraged with how we, how we played. Um, defensively, just not good enough. You know, I think um, – and this is probably from a team perspective. Sometimes stats don't tell the story, but but in this game they do. You know, if you look at it from a rushing, you know, we averaged 2.3. They are 2.7. I think they were 5.3. Uh, they rushed for 222. We rushed for 85. You know, and, and the big reason why is because negative plays, something you can't have versus those guys. And um, snaps caused ours. Um, if you look at turnover margin, they had one, we had three. Um, if you look at the middle late, so the last four minutes of the first half, first four minutes of the second half, really where the game was decided, 14 to three them. Um, you know, and, um, but I can continue going, but let's go back to defense. But I think stats do tell a story in this game. They don't always, but they did in this game for sure. Um, our, rushing, our rushing defense was, was not good. We gave up explosive runs, a lot of quarterback scrambles. You know, and if you watch, if you go back and rewatch the game, you know, we'd have spot, uh, stop, two yard, three yard, and the explosives are what killed us. That in in the quarterback run game, and a lot of those were on scrambles. We just generated zero pressure. He's a quarterback that struggled with pressure coming in, and we just didn't generate any. Um, so that was disappointing. Um, and then we struggled when they went unbalanced and, and when they tempoed us. And so we'll continue to see that, I'm sure. Um, I think that was a communication uh, sideline to players, player to player, um, but just wasn't good enough. You know, the positives defensively, three takeaways, zero points off turnovers. So did a really good job defensively putting out the fire. Uh, we played physical. We, we tackled. Uh, we hit them. Um, you know, we didn't get pushed around on the line of scrimmage by any means. Um, and I thought if you look at guys that really played well, Anthony Wilson played well. Uh, Drillside Trider played well. Jaheim Joseph played well. So encouraged with, with the way that those three guys played. Um, offensively, just below our standards, you know, like the turnovers, we had ball issues uh, repeatedly, and you're not going to beat quality people. And that's something we didn't do last year. And we had three turnovers, and we put the ball on the ground a couple more times. Just, just that's bad football. And we struggled with just basic functioning football, snaps. Um, red zone, if you look at it, as bad as we played, if we just score in the red zone, then we have a ball game. Uh, we had it in the red zone the exact same amount of times they did. And, and we were one for four there. We don't convert a fourth and one. We kick two field goals and we get a touchdown. And, and that's, the, that's the game right there. And 
our perimeter blocking, we didn't do a good job running guys off. We had some 10, 12 yard runs that would have been 30 and 40 if our receivers did what they were supposed to do. Um, we had four drops on potential explosive plays um, with guys that, that usually make those. That hadn't been an issue for us. Um, you know, and just just disappointing because we got the talent to to play a lot better than that, and that's. Uh, but we didn't, and so um, positives had zero penalties. Thought we did a really good job versus their ends. Um, you know, I I think we we got five penalties on them. You know, we messed we we mixed our snap count up. Uh, we really um, played with tempo when the officials would actually get the ball spotted, and and and, and so that was uh, we really did a nice job versus those guys. They weren't huge factors in the game. They got they got a couple of rushes late, um, but really kind of nine factors. So that that was a positive. And, and to wrap it up, just to close out that game, it's not going to make or break us. I, I, th I think I told you all that a week ago. This, this game wasn't going to make or break us. Um, the frustrating thing is you work to get to a point where you play a game that's on a national stage, and then um, and we just didn't produce. And there's no reason being in denial about it. It is what it is, you know. It's, um, and you gotta, you gotta, like our guys watched it today. You gotta learn. You gotta own it. You gotta learn from it. And you gotta grow. And that's kind of where we're at. We gotta grow from it. And uh, our season's still in front of us. You know, there's, um, there's been a lot of good West Virginia teams that got beat by Penn State in its history and bounced back and have had special years. And there's no reason why this this team can't do the same. Um, we've got a we've got an opponent coming in this week that's that has played football at a high level. You know, this is this Albany team, the, the thing that, that sticks out to me the most as I watched them uh, last night and this morning is extremely well coached. This is a group that played in the semifinals last year, the FCS. Um, I'm sitting there watching them beat Idaho in the, in the I think it's the Kibbe Dome. And I played there when we were at Troy when Idaho was, F, when Idaho was uh, FBS. That's a tough place to play. And they go out last year and win in Idaho. And I'm watching that game thinking, you know, Idaho almost beat Oregon. And so I think that puts some um, – that gives you some perspective on what kind of team that's coming in here. It's a team that's, that's used to winning. Um, it's a team that plays in a really good conference, the CAA. It's one of the top two or three uh, FCS leagues in the country. Coaching that myself for a number of years. And these guys do a really good job schematically in all three phases. Um, and, and I'll start kind of on offense. Last year, they were really good throwing the football, uh, but it, it started with the run. They're going to give us a bunch of different formation looks. They want to establish the run. Um, offensive line-wise, they've got, they've got really good size, especially at the FCS level. I think they got three guys up front that are good enough playing our league. Um, and they've got a receiver that had a big game last week or on Saturday night that, that started his career at Oregon. Uh, overall, they got 20 Division One transfers. I think six guys are on po Power Four rosters a year ago, uh, so they've got guys that 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 can play at this level, and they're not going to be intimidated. Uh, they gave Marshall everything they wanted and more last year down in Huntington, and so um, defensively, they line up and play. They're a four down front that bases out of cover four, and and they play really gap sound defense they tackle their defensive line is really well coached they've had several guys that have left there in the last uh, three and four years and gone on to to power four schools and then been drafted and so they really are good at developing guys on that defensive line and they've got two corners that that can really run that that they play man covers regardless who they're playing they've lined up and played man and so um, and they're sound in their special teams uh, they do some things that, that we've got to work. They're a little bit unique. Uh, but they're a good football team. Uh, this is the best FCS program we've had come in here since uh, the first game in, in 2019 when we played James Madison. And so they've got our attention. We're an 0-1 football team till we do something about it. And we've got a great opportunity on Saturday night. Uh, get under the lights, you know. Um, my message to our fans is, is I wouldn't lose faith on one game. You know, we didn't perform well. Um, Penn State's got a good team, but – um, we'll bounce back and we'll get back on track and we've got a good football team and we just got to go out and show it and so it starts this week with our next opportunity so I hope fans turn out it should be a nice night we're gonna get to see the lights for the first time and so looking forward to that so Greg open us up so start uh, up front on both yep. sides of the football I mean a minute and you said after the game Penn State's very good so but you guys struggled there seemingly you, your thoughts having one tape well the on both sides? so I can 
I'll try to explain it to you. So, mm -hmm. offensive line wise, if you go back and you just watch it, and we didn't do as poor a job running the football as the numbers show. Um, now they are what they are. I'm not trying to convince you that numbers are lying, but we had two what a minus 16 on the snap that hit the receiver. That that was the quarterback's fault. And then the hot snap was minus 11. So we had minus 27. And then on the pass play where Garrett fumbled was another minus seven or eight. And so you add all that minus yardage and it looks worse than it actually was. Okay. So our point of contact, we want, we had one negative one outside run. It was on a first and 10 in the going toward the weight room uh, where we had Jaheim kind of went backwards and we lost six yards. And that was really the only significant negative run we had that wasn't self-induced, right? Their, their three technique, uh, Durant kid who we really recruited hard, he made a nice play on our, on our left guard. Um, but, the num but our play up front wasn't as poor as the numbers show, okay? Um, I thought we did a, a really good job on their edge people. Um, their quickness in the interior bothered us some. Um, but I thought we got expansion on their ends. I thought we got good movement. Uh, Jaheim, we didn't get enough touches. He got injured and missed a good chunk there in the second, third quarter. Um, but we didn't get him enough touches in general. But I thought he and CJ did some good things in the run game. I thought uh, Traylon Davis did some good things in the run game. We've got to be more consistent versus the movement inside. And, and Cole's got to play a lot better for us in the run game. And then our receivers, they're playing man coverage, and we got to run those guys off. And so we probably left 30 to 50 yards um, in run, run, rushing offense out on the field be, just because our receivers didn't run off. And uh, that was disappointing. And you can turn on our film from last year, and we were as good as anybody that was playing and running people off. And for whatever reason, we did not do that on Saturday. And so um, – I say all that to say that our offensive line play was better than what the rushing numbers look like. Um, and then our quarterback made some poor decisions in the run game, which attributes that as well. On the flip side, defensively, um, we didn't necessarily – our issues were not just because they knocked us off the ball. Um, it's probably I, – I, and if, if that was the case, I'd, I'd come in here and say that. That wasn't the case. They didn't physically knock us off the ball. Um, but we did a really poor job of – we did not do a good enough job in any of our, our, our run games. Um, we did a really poor job in our, in our pass lanes because we were too fast. And when we were running games, and I'm talking about D-line games, on passing downs, we were too fast and, and left big gaps, which I, I haven't calculated the scramble yards, but it's quite a bit. You know, it's probably 50 or more in scramble yards. Um, and then we didn't do, we over pursued the ball on outside zone. And so we had several cutbacks because we over pursued the ball. Um, and so for us, I think it's, it's about simplifying what we're trying to do um, in the run game and making sure our cutback lanes are in better spots. That, that'll, that'll be the first thing. Um, but not, not, we didn't get knocked off the ball. That's, we didn't. That's why I don't have a, a, an issue with our physicality. Um, but our execution was not very good. And, and they outgapped us on, on a couple unbalanced plays. I got a little, probably more footballish than y'all probably wanted, but. Yeah, how much, how much of the stuff on defense that is from just not getting enough pressure on Allard? Well, he, his completion percentage was not very good with pressure. Um, now, they know that, too, and there's there's a lot of seven-man protection in there. It's hard to get, you know, like you pick your poison. If you're a seven-man protect, you gotta you got to bring a lot of people. And if you do, you're leaving yourself, you know, in man coverage. So you got to kind of pick and choose. Um, but, no, I mean, he played really well. But he also had very – I mean, he had space and – there was never a time in that game where he was uncomfortable, you know, and and that's on us. Health wise, you know, you come out relatively healthy. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, our feelings are hurt. Does that count? 
Uh, the uh, nah, everybody. I'm pretty sure we had a light practice this morning. Everybody was out there, so we'll be we'll be back. Yeah, you mentioned maybe you should have gave more carries to uh, Jaheen, even though he did get banged up, and that was part of it. Was there a reason why that didn't materialize that way during the game? Because he no. was somebody that Penn they hadn't seen the year before, really. Yeah, so we got him touches early, and then he had that position. Like, I didn't get him carries late in the game because the game was decided. So, really, um, it's more of a second and third deal. And several of those, so most everything we do in the run game is read-wise, right? And I'm explaining it to you with the thought of he should have had more touches, okay? So, like, he should have had more touches. Um, but everything we're doing is in the read game. And so, um, there was a couple misreads where he should have got the ball. So, um and there's at least two passing plays where he should have got the ball. So his touches should have been more. Um, but myself as a play caller, I should have called more plays that get him get him touches as well. So um, that's kind of that. And he did get hurt. He did miss some time, but still should have got more touches. Overall thoughts on the passing game? I mean, Garrett's stats were basically the same as they were last year. Yeah, in the game. yeah. yeah I think that's. I think you answered the question. You know, yeah, not 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 real fired up and. We dropped more balls than we did a year ago. You think about it, you know, we had the first play of the game. That would have been a 30-plus play. You know, we missed one on a seam ball. Uh, the ball gets knocked out of Cole's hand. And then there's another There's another one we got our hands on. And those are all minimum 15-plus yard gains, you know. So, um, it's not a game. This, is, this isn't a could have. This is, you know, there were plays there. We didn't make them. And then we missed a really bad third down throw uh, right at the uh, end of the half on a third and three that you got to make. Uh, we missed a third down where we, we didn't go to our running back where you got to throw. That's that's the read tells you to throw the running back. And so we were not as efficient. And so we've put a lot of time and effort into that. Now we're not going to bail out just because we didn't play well in the first game, but um, there wasn't the improvement that we were expecting to see. I think that's fair. I just want to clarify something from the post game. You said you kind of just went away from motion because of the snapping issues, right? Uh, but you did go back to motion. We went to it after we took that. So if you look at that play, so that was in the third series. So the first series of the game, I think we went six plays. My mind's working right. So we went six plays. Um, and we had a couple where the play clock. So in full transparency, our coach to player didn't work the first series. All right. So it, for, it went out. And I don't know what the case was, but we didn't have our coach to player. All right, so we were going to huddle the whole time, but because the coach to player went out, we didn't. So, um, so we had some issues there. First play after the turnover, we motioned Garrett asked for the ball late. Ball hits him. Next play, we're going to run a run and play after we got because credit defensively, we got to stop after that. It was still zero to zero. We get the ball back. The very next play is. Motion play, we're going to run the ball. That was another carry that was supposed to go to Jaheim. All right, that ball goes boom off. It was, a, it was kind of a really hard snap. And so at that point, I went off our opening script and just went to some very standard plays really into that. Or we went to some motions that aren't affected by the snap. Does that make sense? Not all motions are affected by snaps. The timing ones are, where you're trying to give, really where we're motioning back to like three backs, it's a three back look. That's kind of, those are the ones that are all timing based. It, yeah, and we got, and we kind of got away from those until later. Um, so the ones, I guess the easiest way to explain this, again, I'm, I'm probably doing a little more football than I normally do, but the easiest way to explain it is the ones that are affected by timing where there could potentially be something hit, we got, we got away from. We went back to him later, yeah. And that was after Garrett had settled down a little bit. Okay, and then, I don't know if this is connected or not, but I know they had the player to coach, but, like, you all were signaling stuff in, too. You had the sheets up and everything. How much was that related at all, or did you guys so have that plan? we did in? it more than we were planning on. Yeah, so the way you have to do this is you have to have – so if you're going to play um, – so we wanted to play with some tempo versus those guys because – they match personnel, so we wanted to get in some. So when they went to their big sets, we wanted to play open. All right, what I mean by that, when they went to their three linebacker looks, we wanted to play open, and and we, we and we caught them, and we had some success with that. Um, but to play fast, you got to still use signals, okay? And and then when there's some times we're going to huddle. When you huddle, you don't need signals. So and then you've got to 
have plans for a rainy day, aka the system goes out, you know, and so that's kind of that's kind of the way. So you got to still have the signals. You got to have the ability to cover them up when you're if you're going to use them. Um, so yeah, that's does that answer your question, Mike? Follow up to the motion and the snaps. In looking at those, it looks like, in addition to one that hit the two that you talked about, a couple more were really close to the motion player. Are you trying to really cut that finely to create more confusion, hide it, or did you mm -hmm. feel like there were some others that were a little tight? Yeah, there's probably two more. Yeah, there's two more. And the the thing about it is, is like <clears throat> when you when you uh, so from just from a schematic standpoint, we're pretty simple in our schemes, but we give people a bunch of different looks. And and there's some other people that do that, but that's kind of that's kind of our mo is we're gonna. We're going to be pretty simple in our schemes, but we're giving people different looks. And then um, who we're reading on different plays and, and how, how we're getting into our runs. Then we try to marry all our runs, all right, with screens and run action pass plays and things like that. And usually all the motions and all that stuff fit together, right, where all the movement plays look the exact same, whether it's a run, it's a pass, a screen, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, we're moving the pocket. And so – um, to do that, you got to have some of those timing motions. And literally, we did – that's the first time – I'm not saying for in ever because we've I – mean, I'm sure, but that's the first time in a really long time we've had those issues. And uh, and we work that from – we because when you can have a ball in the summer, we work it. And so we do a ball handling drill every single day. And so – we obviously got to do a better job of that, but that hasn't been an issue until that game. Now, it definitely was an issue in the game, Kevin. You know, you had an amazing build-up to the game, all you know, like heading mm -hmm. into that opener, and an amazing atmosphere there and the likes. Uh, obviously, this week is going to be harder to get that mm -hmm. emotion up, and maybe you shouldn't even get it up. Maybe it should be about correcting things, and then you got to go back to it with the with, uh, pit coming mm -hmm. up. I mean. It, Talk about the emotions that you're now facing heading forward. Well, it's it's really about, um, to me, like it didn't go the way you wanted it to go, and it, and it's there is some deflating into that, right? There's a build up for the game. You feel like whether it's a player or a coach, you feel like that you've got a team good enough to win the game, and then you just don't play well, you know. So it's deflating for a coach. It's deflating for a player, but this is also a business and you got another game to play and you can feel sorry for yourself till about right now, you know, and like, and it's, it's done and you move on. Like this is for me, this is kind of the, the last bit of the morning. I do that. I talk about the game with you all and I'm done and I get to move on. Right. And kind of go into a bunker and get ready for, for Albany and, and get ready to play, you know? And so you got to flush it, but you got to learn from it because if you don't learn from it, then you're going to repeat it. And there were some mistakes we made, you know, in, in our preparation, there were some mistakes we played and we made in our execution that, that cannot happen again, whether it's versus Albany, Pitt, Kansas, Oklahoma State, as we go on. Because we play a really tough schedule. I mean, we play a lot of really good football teams. And so um, we've got to correct those things. We've got to get our guys ready to play. Like, to me, and you all hear me say this all the time, like, our guys being ready to play is, like, zero concern for me. Because we got enough depth now. If somebody's not ready to play, then, then we're going to get them out. And so – like, we only got one game this week. We're going to get back to work tomorrow. Um, we'll have two really good practices, and we'll play considerably better on Saturday versus a team that we got a lot of respect for in, in Albany. Greg, you were asking something? Yeah, admittedly, it's easy to second guess. You probably do it yourself when things don't go right. But the, the two-point conversion, you know, decision, a fourth down or two in the red zone, try yeah. that didn't go right, what were your thoughts behind those? Yeah, well, I would do every one of them again. So let's start. Where do you want to start, fourth? Yeah, so I just think that when you get it under a yard, like you got to go for it. And we weren't going to win that game with field goals. Um, I felt like going into it to win the game, we were going to be in the upper 20s. And so um, just looking at what they did statistically last year, you know, I really felt like four, maybe five trips to the red zone was what it was going to be. And if we were playing, we ended up having four and we played poorly. So I may have underestimated that. But um, just looking – at all the quality offenses they played last year, that's what they were getting, and uh, and so that's a thought there. You gotta you gotta go. You gotta you gotta be able to score touchdowns. Um, we converted the other three, so 
Um, and then the two-point play is what you're trying to do is – do you remember – what was the score there, Greg? Do you remember? Run it to 13. 27-12. 27-12. Yeah, yeah. So, so the thought process there when you're trailing, and that's a good question, is you want to give yourself the most chances, right? Yeah. And so what you have to do is you have to think ahead like they're going to score. And so what you're trying to do is you're trying to give yourselves you, – when you, when you go for it, you know that you're going to have to do it another two times to be able to win the game. So yeah. the thought is you go for two because you're trying to play it in advance because you know like, okay, if you go two for three on, on two-point conversion, that's really good, all right? And that gives you a chance to win the game. So just kind of, kind of thinking, thinking ahead. And I, and y'all heard me say this, and I've said this publicly before, is like, a lot of those decisions are made before you go in, right? And and I use the I use the like the the poker analogy or the blackjack analogy uh, a lot because I think it makes sense. I hope it makes I hope it makes sense to y'all. If it doesn't, then y'all tell me when we're done here. But is you play the rules of the game, right? And so whether it's blackjack or you're playing poker, you know, you have certain things that in playing blackjack you're going to hit or you're going to split or you're going to you're going to hold, right? And those are basically the rules of the game. And there's sometimes where the dealer's going to beat you and you played your hand the right way. And that's the way I think about these decisions within a game is we do a lot of thinking about them before and then that way it's not so emotional within and just become just because the outcome isn't always exactly what you want it to be, um, doesn't mean that the decision was wrong. And so, and that's the way I feel about those. You know, we were three or four on fourth downs. Um, if I had to do every one of those again, I'd done every one of them again. Okay, um, and it's probably not asked about it for four and four, right? And that's a, it's a and it's a fair question. I'm not I don't mean to demean the question at all. It's a fair question. But and the same with the two point play is you make those decisions in the processes. Now, if you're making poor decisions, you got to go back and look at your processes. But I feel really good about those processes for those decisions. Just that, this the one, the two-point play, we had an MA. Like, we just didn't block it the right way. Um, you know, the, the fourth, the fourth, the, I would, I would argue that our spot was unkind. Like, on, I think like, we very easily could have been four for four. Um, so yeah, Mike. Results for you, for them. First thing, what did you first say? down results for you, for them, seemed like a pretty big difference. Just how much does that change when easier for them than? Yeah, we had 19, they had 21. No, it seemed like just a production on first down too. Yeah, it seemed like that was like third and two every down for them. So, yeah. sorry, second and two every time. For mm -hmm. them. Yeah, that was good. Like that's fair. Our P and tens were pretty good. Um, they had less success on P and tens, more success on made first downs. Um, yeah, we we had too many third downs in the game you know if you go back and you look at it um i always like the way the stats read it's always third downs and then fourth downs but if you go for it on fourth down the third downs doesn't mean as much right so it's really about end of possession downs so our productivity on end of possession downs wasn't necessarily bad well we got ourselves in trouble we were in third and long too much um and that's tough sledding versus those guys because we have to help you know, you have to keep people in. You have to keep your back and your tight and your tight end in, and so now you're playing to their to their strengths because they can, you know, with a four man rush, they're pretty pretty stout, and then they can drop people under your under your three. And they were playing a lot of match like underneath defenders playing man with under underneath defenders. Okay, thanks, coach. All right, thank you. All.